Hi there, Psych2Go fans. A quick thank you from us to you before we start. We want to let you know how much we appreciate your continued support and thirst for knowledge. So, let's continue our brave march to learning about psychology. Fear. You felt fear. It's a dark night and you're watching a horror movie. You scream or jump a little when a scary scene comes up. Or you're plunging down the big drop on a roller coaster and your palms are sweating while you yell from the thrill. We're not talking about that kind of fear. Sometimes, fears become excessive and irrational to the point where we can't function normally. The intense worry and avoidance caused by these fears can interrupt day-to-day -day living, causing panic when that fear is encountered. That's when the fear becomes a phobia. Phobias are classified into three types, social phobia, agoraphobia, and specific phobias. Specific phobias are further grouped into five major categories, environment, situational, animal, blood injection, injury, and others. A 2017 study found that over 10% of adults in the United States alone struggle with phobias. This makes phobias the most common psychiatric illness among women and second most common among men. Curious if you have a particular phobia? Let's look at the seven most common phobias. One, arachnophobia, the eight-legged nightmare. Currently, the most common phobia in the world is arachnophobia, which is the fear of spiders. This phobia affects 3.5 to 6.1% of the global population, meaning around 300 to 400 million people are affected each year. Women are twice as likely to have arachnophobia when compared to men. However, 55% of people may harbor some fear of spiders, just not a full phobia. Researchers Oman and Maneka believe that arachnophobia may be rooted in our evolution. Allegedly, our ancestors found their appearance frightening and viewed them as a threat of food and water contamination. 2. Ophidiophobia Do you hear hissing? Because I hear hissing. Have you seen something out of the corner of your eye that's long and sinuous and froze in fear? Maybe you can't catch your breath and your heart hammers in your chest when a friend shows you their Snake of the World book. If so, you just might have ophidiophobia, the fear of snakes. Ophidiophobia is the second most widespread kind of specific phobia, with around one-third of adult humans reporting to be suffering from it globally. Similar to its siblings, arachnophobia, the fear of snakes is believed to be rooted in the primitive drive to survive, as snakes are typically perceived as a vicious and dangerous creature. Additionally, personal experiences and cultural influences may also play a part. As studies have shown that in places where snakes are less common, more cases of ophidiophobia were reported. It's no wonder snakes often take a starring role in various movie scare scenes and fear-facing reality shows. 3. Acrophobia Glass elevator? No thanks, I'll stay on the first floor. Affecting more than 6% of people globally, the fear of heights is another common phobia many of us have. This phobia's official name is acrophobia. No, we're not prejudiced against acrobats or other high-flying performance professionals. Intuitively, it makes plenty of sense why we'd learn to be afraid of heights. The research alleges that this phobia may be the result of an evolutionary adaptation, like many things. This adaptation developed to help keep us from falling to our deaths. A little of this can be helpful to prevent us from taking unnecessary risks. However, if it gets out of hand and escalates, it could lead to extreme daily difficulties. You might have a severe aversion to common structures such as bridges, towers, steep staircases, and other perceived high places for fear of triggering a panic attack. So take a deep breath, grab a buddy, take it one small step at a time, and let's look at the next phobia. Or aerophobia aka, so how long will it take to get from California to Tokyo? By car? Aerophobia refers to the fear of flying, and it affects around 10 to 40% of American adults. Are you thinking right now, sure, humans don't fly naturally, so fear of flying is understandable? Well, while that's true, aerophobia is actually logically irrational, given that airplane accidents are so rare. 
Statistics report that traveling by plane is actually much safer than traveling by car. Nonetheless, people with aerophobia avoid flights as much as they can, which can be problematic for work requirements or long-distance relationships. 5. Cynophobia Did you say puppies? I think you pronounced demon hound wrong. Puppies, doggos, happy wagging tails, and those soulful eyes, and those sharp, pointy teeth with their scary sheen. Uh, Wait, what? Let us remember again that phobias are, by definition, irrational. The fear of dogs, official name, cynophobia, may be less common than the fear of snakes and spiders. However, it can be just as, if not more, debilitating. Just consider how many pets and stray dogs are present in any given neighborhood. That kind of prevalence makes it virtually impossible to avoid them completely. Unfortunately, this means cynophobics experience intense and frequent dread, anxiety, and even panic. Cynophobia could be caused by a traumatic childhood experience, such as being chased or bitten by a dog, that was never addressed or otherwise fully resolved. Getting proper help and following professional therapy advice could not only make day-to-day life more livable, but allow you to revel in the wonderful world of dogs. 6. Trypanophobia Would it be possible for me to take all my vaccinations in pill form? Next up, we have trypanophobia, the fear of injections. Ever seen the huge, strong sports guy break out into unprovoked tears when it was his turn to get vaccinated at school? Or seen the undisputed tough girl pass out when being asked to donate blood? Maybe they have trypanophobia. While it's normal to be afraid of injections as children, statistics report that the fear persists in approximately 20 to 30 percent of adults, escalating to become trypanophobia. Trypanophobics stringently avoid medical treatments, hospitals, and doctors. As you can imagine, this is incredibly risky to their health. How bad can it be, you ask? Well, the fear can be so intense that most would faint at the mere sight of a needle. An interesting bit of trivia, trypanophobia is the only kind of specific phobia that is found to run in families. And seven, mysophobia. Antibacterial hand gel? Check. Gloves? Check. Hazmat suit? Check. Maybe I need a bubble. Lastly, another common phobia shared by many, and even some well-known celebrities, is mysophobia, better known as the fear of germs. The term was first coined in 1879 by psychologist William Hammond, who believed that mysophobia was a symptom of OCD. This has since been debunked by the discovery that most people who have mysophobia aren't actually OCD. Mysophobia can manifest as excessive cleaning, compulsive hand washing, and extreme avoidance of bacteria and germs, such as frequent or constant use of gloves, face masks, and other perceived germ-blocking attire. In extreme cases, mysophobia can cause people to become shut-ins, cutting themselves off from the outside world for fear of being contaminated. So, in the end, where do phobias come from? Well, according to the American Psychological Association, phobias typically emerge during childhood or adolescence, persisting into adulthood. Phobias, unfortunately, are usually not solo travelers. It's more likely to have multiple phobias than just a single one. Also, we have seen here that some are more common than others. Do you relate with any of these? Do you know someone who does? This has only shown some of the most common phobias. There are many more, such as fear of storms, fear of dolls, fear of enclosed spaces, among others. A specific phobia is characterized by intense fear and avoidance behaviors that can negatively impact a person's life. Fortunately though, all phobias are treatable, usually with cognitive behavioral therapy. So if you're suffering from a phobia yourself, or know someone who is, it's best to seek out a mental health care professional and get the help needed. Thank you for watching. We hope you learned something and gained some insight. Please help us continue our video on providing knowledge by liking, commenting, and subscribing. What would you like to see next? Let us know in the comments below.